We're going to start with something a little different today, and I'll <clears throat> give you the question, and then I, uh, since we're in person, uh, I really like to actually have a, a quick conversation, have a question that I like to bring up, and I like people to actually give me a response, and I will repeat it just so that the people online on the computer are able to hear, right? Because if not, it's just for us, and the people online won't be able to hear it. So I'll repeat your answer the best that I can. Um, but the question is, what is worship? Okay, what is worship? Because when we gather together on Sundays, we often call this worship together, right? We, we, but sometimes I don't think we think often about what we're actually doing. So that's the question for the day. For today, what is worship? Does anybody have? Yes, what's worship? Focusing on God. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Music. Music. Music is worship. Okay. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my way to the back here. Yes. A deep feeling of love. Wonderful. Yeah. Fellowship and praying. Fellowship and praying. Celebrating what God has done for us. Wonderful. Yes. Praising God. Praising God. Did I see a hand over here? No. In the back. Yes. Learning scripture, awesome. All of this is worship, right? All of this is, yes. Offering our gifts to God. What do you mean by that? Oh, she had a good answer, good, good answer. So she gets a, a bonus question. What do you mean offering our gifts to God? So sharing a gift, something that you're good at, something that you're able to share with each other. So music or singing or playing an instrument or something like that. Or being a leader, being able to love the ones who are going to your church or being able to share things with one another. Being a leader, sharing, welcoming people. Wonderful. Thank you. One more? Yeah? Teaching. Teaching. All right. Wonderful. Fellowship. Fellowship. Awesome. So these are things that uh, we do for worship. I'm going to read our scripture. This is from 2 Samuel. This is chapter 6. David brings the ark to Jerusalem. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Bala Judah to bring up from there the ark of God which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it up out of the house of Abinab, Abinadab, which was on the hill Uzzah and Ahio. The son of Abinadab were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. Now we're going to jump, jump down to verse 12. <clears throat> so David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obidaba to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. And when David had finished offering well-being had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all of the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake and a bread and a portion of meat and a cake of raisins. 
Then all the people went back to their homes. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. So David and 30,000 men dance before the Lord. They, they bring the ark finally home. It had been away for many years. It had been in somebody else's home. And David, who is kind of building a kingdom, he's the second king of Israel. And the first king was kind of a mess. And the transition from the first to the second was even worse. And this was after God had told the Israelites that you don't want a king. Trust me, it's going to get messy. But David seems like an honorable person. And at the beginning of his ministry and the beginning of his time as king, he seems to do a lot of things right. And so he says, we got to bring this ark. We've got to bring the presence of God back with us to be with us in in our presence. And so he goes and he gets it and he starts to travel backward. And as he travels, there's this parade, these over offerings. I mean, offering every six paces is just seems ridiculous, right? I mean, it would take them forever to get back, right? It would take them so long. And this whole time, they're supposed to be singing and dancing and shouting. And as they get close to the king, the, the kingdom, as they get back to where everybody is, David at this point is just in his ephod. Anybody know what an ephod is? It's his undergarments. David is just in his underwear. I imagine he was so hot and sweaty and he was probably so sick of all those clothes because they had been dancing for so long trying to travel back. Every six paces they had to stop to sacrifice another animal. Can you imagine the 30,000 men in the back? You know, they probably rotated who was in front and who was dancing at that time. Like, okay, it's your turn. Get up there. I got to go to the back here. Here's David. By the time he gets back, he's in his underwear. Well, the daughter of Saul, who is now considered the wife of David, is not happy about this. She's not happy at all that the king... I'm sure she has visions of what her dad looked like as king, and she probably never saw him in his underwear dancing before everybody. In fact, probably many of us have never seen that. And she has hatred, it says, in her heart for David. David says this later on after the confrontation. It's not on the screen, but I'm going to read this to you. David said to Michal, it was before the Lord who chose me in place of your father and all of his household and appointed me prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, that I have danced before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in my own eyes. But by the maids of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in honor. David says, it's going to get worse than this if you thought that was bad. I was dancing before the Lord. When we talk about worship, I think sometimes we forget what it means to meet God. There's a story of a little boy who uh, had a wonderful day at church and he goes home and he's uh, by his bedside praying and his mom is overhearing him and he says, God, we had the best day at church. There was cookies and Sunday school was awesome and I just really wish you would have made it. (laughs) Sometimes we come to church because it's comfortable Sometimes we come to church because that's what you do. And trust me, every Sunday morning that I miss, there's something in my bones that's telling me something is wrong. I should be at church. I grew up going to church. I rarely miss a Sunday. And there's something comforting about being here. But sometimes I think we forget that we're supposed to bring something with us. That we're not, we're not coming here for comfort. We're not coming here just to be with one another. We're not coming here because it's what you do on Sundays. We're coming here because we're meeting God. 
Now, I know that's hard because then everybody says, but you don't have to go to church to meet God. And I agree, this is not where God lives. This isn't, this isn't David's time where God lived in an ark and you had to be in the presence of this wonderful box with cherubims and seraphims on it. And you didn't have to stand in front of that in order to be with God. And you don't have to be in these walls to be with God. God is with us all the time. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And God is with us everywhere. But you see, that's hard because everywhere is a hard thing for us to focus on. Everywhere all the time is a hard thing for us to do when God is just everywhere with us all the time. Sometimes we humans, we need, we need some warm up. We need some ritual. We need some practice. We need something to get our minds right to get our hearts in the right place so that we can be present with God. That's what I think church is. Getting ready in the morning before church, no matter what you're wearing, doesn't have to be the very best thing you own. Sometimes that keeps people who don't own the very best things out, right? But as we prepare for church and as you drive here, I hope it's a little bit of a drive. Maybe you get to walk. But there's something about us humans that need time to prepare for important things. We need times to get to get our minds right and our hearts prepared. Sometimes we have to leave other things at the door. Sometimes we have to show up in a new way that our minds and our hearts have to be in the right place because meeting God everywhere all the time, where sometimes we're like that little boy and said, Man, it was great, but where were you, God? And church is a wonderful place for us to prepare our hearts and our minds to come here to bring everything. Not just our gifts, not just our talents, but bring all that we are, all of us, all of our humanity, everything that you and I are to come here so that we can be in the presence of God. I think worship, the the word in seminary they used was adoration all the time. My worship professor loved that word. It's a time of adoration where we come and we lift God's name high, where we celebrate God. I always thought that was a little weird. Why did God want all of God's creation to celebrate God? What kind of creator is that, you know? A creator who makes a bunch of beings and and these feeble humans and this humanity and all of these other creation, and he just wants to be celebrated all the time? That seems like a weird God to me. But that's only if you discount how much God loves us. If you truly understand who we are as creation, then you can understand just how important it is for the creation to be with the creator. You see, God's love is so deep for us that God wants to be with us from the very beginning of creation, through all of the history of the Bible, through all of the history of humanity. God is just wanting to be with us. So a time of worship, of singing, of fellowship, of teaching, of learning the scriptures, a time of gathering, a time of bringing who we are, this worship, this adoration can change who we are because we deeply understand just who we are as creation, these humans that are faulty, that are frail, that are sore from moving. And yet the God of all creation loves us and wants to be with us deeply. And we sometimes get dressed in the morning because it's Sunday and get in our cars because it's Sunday, and drive that familiar path to church because it's Sunday, because that's what we do on Sunday. And God is yearning to be with us. 
to strip away all the distractions, strip away everything that has kept us from being fully present with God. God has been waiting for us this morning, the presence of God. I'm going to read Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. I imagine that David wrote that soon after his entering into Jerusalem. Talking about entering into his courts with praise, well, The presence of God lived in a court, came through the front gates. David was told not to build the house of the Lord. That's for Saul to build, I mean, for his son Solomon to build later. So there was no home for God, even though David wanted to build him. But just being in God's presence, David was foolish, was singing, was dancing. My last point is that sometimes the music is just not right. It just doesn't feel like the right thing at the right time. And sometimes the prayer and the the sermon isn't that great. And sometimes uh, things go wrong in worship. I've had it where electricity wasn't on or the air conditioner didn't work or the heater didn't work. And sometimes when we come to this place, we're distracted by all the things around us, all the things that we want and hope for on a Sunday morning. And yet, it's never been about us. Sometimes that's hard to remember because we're the ones who've got to get in the car and come and show up. We're the ones who've got to make the time and the effort to be here. But it's not about us. It's about a time to honor God, to recognize who we are, and to be fulfilled as God's creation. There's a story about a man in the South after the sermon and after the the worship, the pastor has to go stand in the back and shake everybody's hand. You have to do that if you're in in the South, okay? There's no other way around it. Everybody will wait at the door. Nobody will leave the door until the pastor has come. So you just got a line of people and somebody who says, pastor, you got to get over there or else we're just going to be stuck here all day. They can't leave without shaking the pastor's hand. There was a man who went to the pastor in the back and he said, you know, pastor, today I just really didn't like the music very much. Didn't really like any of those songs that we sang. And the pastor said, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought that you knew that we weren't singing for you today. (laughs) We were singing for God. We were singing to bring ourselves to worship, to meet God. I am so excited to be here, to worship with you all, to get to know you, to get to know one another, to be in ministry together, to worship weekly here, because on Sunday I'll be here, because it's just not right if I'm not. But also because this is a time and a place where we get to set everything else aside and to be with our Lord, with the one who loves us more than anything. Thank you so much for your welcome today. Amen.